So now then, we're, you've got you've moved into John's orbit in a kind of way, or did he move into yours, or was it just totally accidental? Um, well, I had a friend. We had a friend in common. He had um, he used to live in a place called Walton in mm -hmm. Liverpool, slightly posh area, and um, we had this friend called Ivan, who I used to go to school with, who's Ivan Vaughan, who was soon to be on Horizon, believe as it or what? not, as the subject of a Horizon program. Well, obviously, very he's interesting. On Horizon. <laughs> And he was instrumental in bringing you... Ivan, Ivan was kind of in the little groups we had formed then, and he, he said, come up to Walton, there's a Walton fate. He said, come up, there's, there's this group playing. So I came, I was about 14 then. <whistles> Had the hair done, the jacket, you know. And I went to, it was Saturday afternoon, and um, John was on stage with what was then the Quarrymen. It was a group called the Quarrymen after his school was Quarry Bank. And uh, I saw them, you know, I thought, well, they're quite a good group. I, mainly John was the impressive one, he was the lead singer up there, you know. And um, he'd, he'd taken a song and he didn't know the words, but he was making them up. It was come, you know, which was like uh, clever. It, it was Come Go With Me by the Dell Vikings. And he, he hadn't got the record yet, but he knew no one else would know, so it was all down to the penitentiary. He, you know, put kind of bluesy words in. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I, and we got together after the show. Ivan took us round backstage. And um, I sang a couple of like little Richard songs and stuff, Eddie Cochran songs that I knew. And I knew all the words, so definitely I was very impressive right there. To him? To John, yeah. And did he suggest... Anyone who knew the words, you know, was yeah. pretty I didn't have to make them up. Did he then suggest that you worked together? Uh, he didn't. Um, he was sort of leaning over me. He was like a, a couple of years older than me. He was one and a half years older than me. So I was a bit kind of, you know, innocent then. I was 14. I hadn't seen a lot of life. And... Um, well, you know, not the kind of life we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, and he was into drinking a bit, you know, so he had the couple of beers, you know, being real. And he was leaning over. I remember thinking, oh, you know, gosh, he's all a bit smelly and beer. <laughs> but um, you hadn't tried a drop then? No. Well, I did that day, actually. Yeah, yeah. Pretended I was 16, 18, I mean. And, um, Went home dizzy. I think someone bought it for me, actually. Went in, go oh. in, get us a bottle. They go, well, we used to drink black velvet. I get sick a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Guinness, and, Guinness, and Guinness and cider. It was, yeah. So, and this was the quarry man. Now the so quarry Ivan man... introduced us. Ivan, our, my friend, uh, our friend, introduced us. Right. That was the quarry man. And then a couple of weeks later, uh, another friend out of that mob called Pete Shotton. Um, he was, I was cycling around there, and he came up on his bike. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and he said uh, they'd like you to be in this group. They, you know, they thought you were really good knowing all those words. You're in. And so I said, well, you know, let me consider this big move. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> now then, how did you got to persuade your dad to let you go out at nights and play? Uh, a little bit, yeah. So I, I had to... The clothes were the big problem. Because, you know, parents in those days, the same as parents any time, they think that if you dress like a fashion, they think you've gone that way. You know, if you dress punk, they think you're going to hit someone. Um, and my dad thought, you know, because I was dressing a bit Ted and greasing the hair back with the Vaseline and that, um, he thought I was going, you know, a bit, a bit naughty. So he wouldn't let me wear the drainpipe trousers we used to wear, the tight, tight jeans. So I used to have to take them with me in a bag and change on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and then you started to get paid then? Yes. Uh, First taste of money do we have at this time? Yes, it wasn't... Uh, Big taste, but we, often we used to. I remember playing at uh, was the where was it Jacaranda, I think downstairs at the club called the Jacaranda. Alan Williams, right, Alan? Um, <laughs> in joke, in joke for Alan Williams fans. Um, <laughs> and we were downstairs at the Jacaranda. He said, "You can." He said, I'm, "We said, what are we getting paid?" He said, "All the coke you can drink." <laughs> You're on. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Uh, that, you know, that's what we used to say. And then about. Alan Williams, this Alan Williams took you to Hamburg. Didn't took he? us to Hamburg, yeah. And now, I, I this had is to the, ask my dad for that. Well, this is the most incredible transposition to, that, that these young <laughs> lads are lifted out of Liverpool mm. and ferried to Hamburg. I mean, what did your dad say about you going to Hamburg? Well, um, at first he wasn't very keen, but he could see that we were really excited. It was the first um, kind of real employment the group had ever had. And we were, the others in the group were, like, very hot on it. They didn't have to... They didn't have as much problem with their parents on it. So I was... Uh, 
But my dad was good, you know, he, he really just checked out that uh, we had a decent manager and stuff like that. I don't, I don't quite understand why Hamburg was important and not Lon London wasn't the Mecca. What happened was some fellow came over from Hamburg and he wanted rock and roll groups and yeah. somehow he got the idea that they were in London at the Two Eyes and someone at the Two Eyes, I think, had told him they were also a couple of groups in Liverpool. Right. So Alan Williams became the agent for all the Liverpool groups and Alan sent millions of groups out there over the years. He took us in his van, first of all, and dropped us at the club. Thank you very much. <laughs> you mean he took you from Liverpool to Hamburg <clears throat> in a van? Yeah, across all the borders and that. And uh, took us in a van, you know, the old dormobile kind of thing. And then we got to the club and it was like, you know, uh, nightlife, the Reaper Barn and all this, you know, uh, nightclubs and everything. And we'd never really seen enough. There we are on the roof of one of them, in fact. Where George just Harrison, been... who's the one on the right, looks very tall, doesn't he? He's standing further up the roof. <laughs> Well, just, just take me into Hamburg with you. I mean, was it a flesh pot city? Was it oh, yeah. dazzling? It, it was fascinating for us. I mean, it was not fascinating, it's not the word. It was uh, loony, really, because we were just schoolboys. And at school, we hadn't... At the school I went to, there wasn't... There was another sister school called... Ours was the Institute, and there was this school called Blackburn House, which was the sister school. But we never, ever saw any of the girls from there. Strange, only one day a year. And you used to sort of look over the wall, there's a girl. <laughs> So we were a bit uh, crazed, you know, so we got to Hamburg, this flesh pot city, and, um, well, we had a bit of fun, you know? it was It was quite crazy. Who spoke though. German? George and I spoke a little bit, because we learned it at school, uh, but we didn't know, it wasn't madly useful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the only bit... <laughs> the only thing we knew, actually, was, um, Jakob wurde frechte von allen Vögeln, die ich je gesehen habe. Which means, roughly when translated, <laughs> Jacob was the cheekiest of all ravens I have ever seen. 